Welcome. I'm Christopher Avery from PartnerWorks. Many people agree that taking responsibility is the first principle of success. But until now, experts could not tell you how to take responsibility. They only told you that you should be responsible. Some people believe that responsibility is a character trait, something that some people have and others don't. That assumption tells us that we should find the responsible people and avoid the irresponsible people. Over the past 25 years, I've studied responsibility within individuals and organizations. I've learned that taking responsibility and avoiding responsibility is all part of a fascinating mental process that can be observed, taught, and learned. Today, I will share the responsibility process with you. You will see that there are six predictable sequential mental states that keep us from taking responsibility. This pattern operates identically in all of us. The responsibility process explains how we get stuck and it offers us a way to move forward. As you can see, it's a very simple model. It will not make complete sense to you today. You will have many questions. That's fine. Everyone does. Over time, you will come to understand the responsibility process very deeply, and it will be your friend. Responsibility sits at the top of the list. If we want to be successful, we need to spend as much time as we can above the line, operating from a mental state of responsibility. This is where we're the clearest and most resourceful. We feel unencumbered. We feel self-empowered. When things are going well for us, it's easy for us to take responsibility and credit. However, when things go wrong, and they will go wrong, we often lose the ability to act from this mental position of responsibility. Two things happen. First, we feel upset, frustrated, or anxious because we have a problem. Second, our mind starts a cause-effect search for answers as to how this happened to us. This takes us well below the line into a series of non-responsive behaviors. We waste a lot of energy coping with a mismatch between what we want and the problem we have. In order to return to the responsibility mindset, we need to first overcome these six non-responsive mental states. We call them coping states. Let's quickly take a look at each one. Our first thought when we are upset is a thought of blame. We call this mental state lay blame. We tell ourselves that someone else is causing our problem. Laying blame is wired into all of us. It's part of our DNA. When we lay blame, we give away our power. How so? Well, we're sure that someone else must change or take action for our problem to go away and before our lives will get better. To get out of the mental state of blame, we need to recognize that it is a powerless mental state. Regardless of who did what to whom, and we need to refuse to operate from lay blame. When we stop blaming, then we land in a mental state called justify. When we're in the state of justify, we point again to external circumstances which are beyond our control as the cause of our problem. If you listen closely, you will hear the language of justify in many workplace conversations. Here are three examples. It's the economy. It's the way management is around here. It's the culture. When we operate from this mental state of justify, we tell ourselves that something out there must change before things can get better for us. When we refuse to justify our problem, we actually reject the external causes for our upset. So what's left is to look inward. That's right, we beat ourselves up. Listen to the language of shame. I should have known better. I'm such a dummy. I deserve these consequences. When we're trapped in the mental state of shame, we tell ourselves that we're not good enough. We even tell ourselves that we lack something we would need to get the results we want. Society often tells us that shame is good. We're owning up to our failings. However, shame is actually quite a trap. It prevents us from the resourcefulness available to us when we are in the mental state of responsibility. When we refuse to shame ourselves, then we land in another mental state. We call this obligation. We all get caught in the obligation mindset. We all have obligations and commitments in life, and it's necessary to have commitments. 
But the trap that I'm talking about occurs within our minds. And it occurs when we have a commitment that we don't like or don't want. I call it the mental state of have to, don't want to. When we're trapped in the obligation mindset, we tell ourselves that we have no choice. There's nothing we can do. When we're in an obligation mindset, we express frustration and a lack of ownership about our commitment. Sometimes we feel so much upset and frustration from the shame and obligation mindsets that we try to escape the problem entirely. When we're in quit, we tell ourselves that as long as we don't look at the problem, it will stay away. Of course, that's not true. The problem remains, and our upset will return again and again. When we refuse to feel trapped by our commitments, we can enter the mental state of responsibility. When you operate from responsibility, you know that you have the power and the ability to resolve the problem. When you operate from this mental state of responsibility, you address the real problem instead of coping with your feelings of upset and anxiety. So what about denial? Denial is probably where you were before you realized you had a problem. That's why it is below lay blame. In denial, you don't yet know that you have a problem because you are ignoring the existence of something. Now, the path to mastery is not simple or easy. It will be the hardest work that you ever do. You will get stuck in the process of trying to get unstuck. You'll be practicing responsibility at many levels. However, responsibility provides a better, more productive way to live and work. My best to you.